Hello everyone. My name is Niklas Fleischer from Fen Systems and the Green Energy Center Europe. Thanks for inviting me to ISA 2023. Today I'm going to present to you the development, or better to say, the project development of the world's first hydrogen powered narrow gauge train. In the picture behind you can see the Green Energy Center Europe. It's a building located in Innsbruck, Technikerstraße 1 to 3. But it's more than that. It's a codex partnership of local and global acting companies and small startups. And together we develop and implement projects for the reconstruction of the energy system with electricity at its core. So to say, we build the bridge into the green energy future. The Green Energy Center is operated by Fen Systems. Fen Systems is a small company uh, working in the fields of strategy, project and product development, quality assurance and monitoring, and also dissemination and training. And since 2018, it is complemented by Fen Research. As you can see or think that there are a lot of research projects in this field, and this was bundled within this research facility that is focuses on interdisciplinary systems and logistics research. Today in my presentation I want to mainly cover three aspects. First, I want to give you an insight into hydrogen and why we need it for the reconstruction of the energy system with, by means of electricity. Second, I want to show you the project development Tillertalbahn 2020 plus energy autonomous with hydrogen. And third, I want to talk about risk mitigation regarding such a hydrogen project with our research and development project Hydrain. Let's start with the hydrogen. Why do we need it for the reconstruction of the energy system when everything is moving towards electricity? Well, this is because we are now introducing volatile resource where we before had chemical energy carriers such as oil, coal and gas. And a volatile resource is now meeting volatile demand. And as you can think, the coverage of the demand, which is mainly the matching of supply and demand, is not an easy thing. <coughs> because if we don't have sun, this wouldn't work. In this case, we can simply rely on the grid to support us and to help us. But in the end, then the problem is just transferred to the grid and someone needs to take care of this problem there. So consequently, it also needs, <coughs> in addition to this power on demand process, also another process needs to be implemented. A process that can store this volatile resource on a big scale. And this is the so-called power to hydrogen process. If we take what we have just seen into account and um, think about what does this lead to regarding power price opportunities or power prices, then we can see that always when there is a lot of solar, especially solar, but also wind and renewables in general in the grid, then the power prices drop. And if you then see that over time, you can, uh, there are times when the electricity prices are extremely high and there are other times when the electricity prices are quite low. So to say there are power price opportunities, it would be the blue um, areas and there are also prices or times when the electricity is extremely expensive. This is, will be later on important for our business case evaluations. Let's take a deeper look into the energy resource and climate strategies of local, national and also global scale. And as an example, I take the, this uh, strategy <coughs> developed from my father in 2014 and even before 2014 and then got uh, decided by the regional government of Tyrol. 
all these strategies more or less work the same. Here you can see <coughs> that the energy demand increased exponentially since the beginning of the energy age. And now what do we want to do? Well, we want to get rid of oil, coal and gas. And in order to get rid of something, one possibility is that you save energy, that you don't need that much energy. In 2011, experts calculated that it's possible in our case of Tyrol to save 50% of the energy, although there is prognosed an increase of, of population and also growth of industry. If you implement a strategic goal such as to be energy autonomous as Tyrol did it, Tyrol wants to be energy autonomous by the year of 2015, you also have to increase the use of own resources. Let's take a look at, at the, the, uh, this saving <coughs> arrow. Well, if you want to save energy, there are two possibilities mainly. Either you implement technologies that are much more energy efficient, so need less electricity by doing the same work, or the other possibility is you really leave out things. <coughs> Since um, efficiency or efficiencies are the highest when using electricity, and this is also the main resource we get from renewables such as sun, wind and water, this reconstruction of the energy system really focuses on electricity. Electricity is at, it, as is at its core and that's why you, or that's because you can do everything with electricity. You can power industry, you can heat extremely efficient with a heat pump, but you also can power mobility. Then, but if you do that directly, you're always in the power on demand process. This means that the power needs to be generated when demand needs it. So you always need to produce the energy simultaneously when you, <coughs> when, uh, you request it. And of course, this is a big issue, especially when, when we take into account that a big part of the energy system is still based on uh, chemical energy carriers, where it doesn't matter if you burn them today, tomorrow, or even in a thousand years. So this power on demand problem will grow. It's not a big issue now and maybe also not tomorrow, but in the next 10, 10 to 20 years, it will get really big. And that's why also another process needs to be implemented to complement the power on demand. And one process that can really um, store energy also on big scale is the power to hydrogen process. The power to hydrogen process, we use electricity at times when we don't need it and split water with this electricity into its products, uh, hydrogen H2 and oxygen O2. And this hydrogen then can be used in mobility and also on this other usages of industry and so on. Well, if we take a look on how <coughs> this prognosis of minus 50% and plus 30% of own resources worked out, we can see uh, if in the installed monitoring system that it didn't work out at all in a way. Well, not at all is not true. There has been a big shift. So we came from an exponential growth and now energy demand is stagnating. That means that we are saving energy per person but we are not coming down this 50%. This is really hard. So what does this mean on the other hand? Well, it means that we need lots of more sun, wind and solar. We need a lot of more electricity. If we take a look at, at what is driving this reconstruction of the energy system, then it's policy and market, obviously, research, strategy guidelines, funding, technology competition, and brand competition, the last two ones really important where we take our finger on. 
And as you can see, um, these technologies, especially in the power to hydrogen domain, they're <coughs> not all there yet. Some still need to develop, need to be developed. That's why we implemented a number, a big number of hydrogen research projects in that regard. So I have given you now an overview why we need hydrogen for the reconstruction of the energy system towards electricity. Well, to solve this power on demand problem, we need to ease it. We need an energy storage, we need a chemical energy storage that can really shift energies in huge quantities, much bigger than what we know from, from pumped hydro. So we need something like natural gas. And this is the best thing we can do. The most efficient thing we can do there is hydrogen when we have electricity to start with. Good, that brings us to our second point, the strategy and project development for Zillow Taliban 2020 plus energy autonomous with hydrogen. The Zillow Taliban is a regional <coughs> rail that rail um, railway that goes from Jenbach to Meyerhofen in the Zillertal. It's a really short rail uh, with 32 kilometers, but it has a lot of stops. So there are in, in the end 18 stops on the entire track. The Zillertal Valley has a huge problem with traffic. And this is known for more than 15 years now. It has been a problem for more than 15 years now. And that's why the region started in 2007 already a regional development called Five Stars for Region, where ideas were gathered how to address especially this uh, traffic problem. And while the years before it even was thought to um, discontinue this rail, this narrow gauge rail, it was clear that it has to be become a more important role and that it needs to be renewed. <coughs> Since the Zillertal or in, in its um, inhabitants were reluctant to have another wire, a catenary, also the idea of green hydrogen was implemented. And uh, in 2016, the Zillertal Bahn uh, contracted FEN systems to look into this. And I really have to tell you when I first heard about this idea to use hydrogen for this train, I really thought, why? Why should anyone do that? There are good solutions there, catenary, or maybe you can also do it with a battery. It's maybe just stupid. But then we started our evaluations and in the end it turned out to be, this problem turned out to be extremely complex and um, I <coughs> to already say that now hydrogen has some certain appeals but we will discuss this in more detail. Based on our findings where we really compared all the possibilities based on diesel then catenary but also battery electric and hydrogen electric uh, the decision of Zillapalban was made of the supervisory board to implement the hydrogen train and that was in 2017. If we now take a look especially on the business case because uh, the main reason or the main question was is this is the possibility of hydrogen affordable? Well <coughs> If we take a deeper look at this, I first really have to say all these parameters, they are particularly case sensitive. Um, what I can already say is it's really important to minimize the number of vehicles because vehicles are especially these tailor-made train vehicles for narrow gauge, they are extremely expensive. Um, <coughs> let's take a deeper look. So we have now four options. We have diesel, we have the catenary, we have a battery and we have the hydrogen options that we took into consideration. First thing, climate neutrality rules out the diesel. This is the option that is operated today. 
Um, no climate neutrality, so that's a big issue, especially if you want to implement something new. But on the on the other side, we have a high technology readiness. We have low technology risks. The investments of infrastructure and trains is both low and also the investments or the operational costs on the infrastructure regarding maintenance are low and also <coughs> but for the trains they're high but here you can say that uh, Zillertal, Zillertal for Gaspardy, they have a workshop they have really specialists in maintaining maintaining or taking or maintaining those diesel trains although they are extremely old and so this is also not a big issue if we have a look on the catenary climate neutral technology readiness level high risks therefore low the technology risks but we have a really high investment cost of this catenary this was also really astonishing to me um, how much this catenary costs and especially in such a really complex environment of a narrow gauge and so on. The train costs are quite low, maybe even the lowest, even lower than diesel, because this is something that is well known. Infrastructure operational costs are quite high to maintain a uh, catenary is quite expensive, <coughs> but the maintenance of the trains is the lowest in this case. Battery, yeah, also climate neutral, technology readiness level, I would say medium, technology risks therefore also medium, while batteries are not that well advanced, is if especially or research, especially if you take into consideration that these batteries have to last 30 years or otherwise you have to replace them, which is then again <coughs> again or results in cost regarding the operational cost. Regarding invest low for the infrastructure you only need charging stations. Trains more expensive than catenary electric infrastructure also the cost of the order maintenance for the op maintenance is also low. Let's take a look at hydrogen. Climate neutral yes we only have water vapor. Yeah. This is also a point that can be discussed, but mainly only water is coming out. Technology readiness level low, and therefore also the technology risks risk is low. And that really has to be taken account if you want to make this hydrogen, uh, or if you consider this hydrogen option. Regarding the capex infrastructure, well, you need to build a hydrogen refueling station you need to implement an electrolyzer storage of hydrogen all this is needed so you have higher invest compared to batteries or also diesel or especially diesel trains <coughs> well there you have the highest cost this is only a few prototypes are uh, and first series are on the market yet so uh, the trains are the most expensive infrastructure uh, maintenance cost uh, medium I would say from a qualitative point of view and the trains <coughs> um, maintenance is also high maybe comparable to diesel so now uh, we have talked about the capex and the opex regarding maintenance let's take a, a deeper look um, regarding some really main energy or main op operational costs the energy what we could find out when we started our studies in 2017 is that the cost of diesel, well this really depends on the diesel price, but they are quite high actually. Back then uh, the electricity from the grid was really, really cheap. So this power on demand <coughs> was not such a big issue, but the grid fees increased the price for the for the electricity by some extent. One thing and the one main uncertainty or risk regarding this energy is the power on demand risk because at the moment you mainly o may or you only pay for the kilowatt hour but in the future and this is already foreseen you also will pay for the power 
due to this power, this problem this of the power on demand where you have to match the supply and the demand. <coughs> and <coughs> regarding batteries, well, you're also on the power on, power on demand side and if you only want to recharge in the stations, you have extreme high power demands. That's something you have to take into consideration. On the other hand, when you use hydrogen, it really depends on how you implement your infrastructure, also on how much you invest there. Um, <coughs> then you sometimes also can use, or if it's big enough, your electrolysis plant, you also can take power price opportunities into account and uh, this results in that with hydrogen electric trains you have much cheaper electricity you can use for the production of hydrogen but of course of, on the other hand you have much higher conversion losses the losses here with catenary are the lowest battery electric <coughs> uh, are in between but with hydrogen you lose two-thirds of the energy electric energy. So if you want to compare this from of these three variants from an, on the energy prices, the energy prices must here be a third of the other two options. Well, <coughs> in 2017, 18, this was really the case. Uh, now energy prices uh, increased by a factor, but they also got much more volatile and um, so this is really something uh, you cannot say especially not if you make calculations for the next 30, 30 years which is the cheapest options here the only thing we can say with certainty is that the power on demand process will get much more expensive and there is some there are some risks involved also in these two options. So <coughs> that were actually the business case um, considerations we had. And if you really want to do such a hydrogen project, you have to think it in a holistic way. You also have to implement and uh, think about the hydrogen infrastructure. Here the project was developed <coughs> We have a hydrogen electrolyzer in Meyerhofen storage, compression, and also dispensing unit. And uh, the, it was foreseen that Verbund AG uh, supplies the electricity. There, of course, also other options were taken in con into consideration. So also the option was there that Zillertalbahn makes its own hydrogen or implements some regional hydropower plan for this, but of course it makes sense to introduce Verbund. This is a really strategic decision because they are the main, re, uh, the main users of this main resource of the Zillertal Valley, water and mountains. Uh, in <coughs> in average, these trains uh, need would uh, or would need 800 kilograms of hydrogen per day which results in more or less 300 tons of hydrogen per year and uh, especially in cold on cold winter days but also hot summer days there is a higher, a higher demand due to cooling and heating of the trains and in case of cancellation line closure, construction work on this track line or track there was also a or is also uh, refueling stations in Jenbach for seeing for seeing that gets delivered uh, from our local green hydrogen economy where I will come shortly to. So <coughs> as you have seen the hydrogen option is quite well it's not that not easy it's 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 the it's how to say or to how to put that in, into words. If you don't want to have a problem, don't do it, but it can offer some really interesting options. Especially if you implement such a project like the Zillertalbahn 2020 plus energy autonomous with hydrogen into a hydrogen valley. Because we always have the problem 
now everyone is speaking about this especially in hydrogen chicken and the egg so the main issue um, some people are there who want to develop infrastructure but they're searching for the demand and that's never given if you implement such a project like the Zillertalbahn then the demand is there you have a demand of 800 kilograms per day with that you can calculate infrastructure and, and uh, that works vice versa so no chicken and egg problem you have green hydrogen available and when you have green hydrogen available and you also have a price for it because at the moment the price tag does not really exist with green hydrogen because it's also not there in big quantities then it's also possible to use it for other purposes like buses especially where battery electric buses don't suffice anymore you can also use it for hydrogen electric trains and also uh, trucks I want to say and also special purpose vehicles like snow groomers and so on so <coughs> this train is really important to really also establish green hydrogen to make it available in such a valley with a price tag that is reasonable and this brings us to the last thing in uh, point two well you also have to embed even such a valley into the build up of a local green hydrogen economy. Here uh, we have progressed already quite far. Uh, this began or this development began in 2014 with the construction of the green hydrogen highway within the or the high green or the hydrogen highway within the green green corridor of the EU, green Brenner corridor from Munich to Bolzano with the introduction of passenger cars. So in 2014 my father ordered the first hydrogen cars together with Walter Huber from Bolzano for Europe and their first hydrogen demand <coughs> was created and also the first hydrogen refueling stations could be tested and further developed and I can really tell you um, at the beginning there were big problems but now also this refueling technology nearly 10 years later is at a level where you can use it for really commercial projects and this <coughs> hydrogen highway project then led to another important project the green hydrogen for Emprise Tyrol and Europe which started in 2016 and which is our flagship project Here you can see the production facility of Emprise with a um, with a bakery and also a butchery and uh, this production facility for this local retailer with 250 stores needs a lot of energy and into, into this uh, green um, an electrolyzer for the production of green hydrogen is implemented and uh, this green hydrogen can then be used for the substitution of natural gas regarding heat process heat within this production facilities but also and this is the primary goal for the shift of the fleet of Emprise towards hydrogen trucks well we also took battery trucks into consideration but uh, regarding their <coughs> necessities logistic necessities they were not an option for for the most part of the fleet so at the moment we only have one truck in operation because hydrogen trucks are not there um, hard to get and also extremely expensive and that's why green hydrogen is now available there we also implemented the logistics system and really now can distribute green hydrogen from these two projects in central Europe and in there there is also the next step now would be the Zillertalbahn 2020 plus energy autonomous with hydrogen that can be for us the first test runs already supplied from the Emprise facility and this would also be really important to also have some redundancy for Emprise later on when there are more trucks and then there is also a third project from the local <coughs> power company TVAC to power to X Kufstein in Langkampfen uh, where they want to implement a novel power to x facility and all these projects together then really also are 
not only green hydrogen economy but a highly redundant hydrogen economy where hydrogen can also be provided to other industries and people who need it so this was my second point the green hydrogen develop or the project development for Tila Talban 2020 plus energy autonomous with hydrogen as you could see the hydrogen train is the most complicated option uh, it has <coughs> regarding cost well some people or experts now also calculated that it's the cheapest version but um, it's safe to say that with this Zillertalbahn Valley we identified a use case where the hydrogen options is not five to seven times more expensive than co uh, compared to the current technology like we have it with the buses and the trucks but it's actually quite similar to the catenary and uh, and the battery solution really depending on which expert is calculating it <coughs> so but it's safe to say um, it's one of the cheapest options to start with hydrogen in Austria and maybe even in in Europe because normally hydrogen is always much more expensive especially now at this early technology state but this Zillertalbahn project is really important as a vocal point or <coughs> for to create a hydrogen valley to also implement other other tools and um, industries in the regard or to supply them with green hydrogen so this brings us to our third point I have also said that it is of high risk uh, these hydrogen trains but before that comes I also want to show you some more spe uh, technical specification about the vehicles um, that was also asked from the audience so the Tillertalbahn foresees a four-part hydrogen electrical multiple unit this is already uh, tender has already been made and there is already a best bidder which is Stadler Rail um, now it's only about really buying these trains and how do they look like yeah narrow gates 760 millimeters maximum power of 1400 kilowatt um, with attractive force of 180 kilonewtons operation speed 80 kilometers per hour um, <coughs> 417 passengers that can fit into these trains so high acceleration capacity that's especially necessary because of the many stops in the Zillertal Ban Valley and also because this is some social aspect that has to be addressed catenary free operation on the entire route there is also foreseen a buffer battery <coughs> uh, compressed hydrogen storage a fuel cell system and uh, special cooling and each center coach as you can see here is self-sufficient so there is no hydrogen line over the wagons there's just electricity connections between them what about the hydrogen storage well there's hydrogen is stored in the uh, center coach in such in, in um, pressure tubes that are vertical the principle is here you can see the power consumption of the simulation of the trains on the entire route well the fuel cell is foreseen to be operated more on more or less constant the pet battery then should take these power peaks the battery is also necessary to to recuperate so when braking so and now we really come to our third point risk the hydrogen option is the most riskiest and that's why you have uh, in order to make this feasible for a commercial project you need to somehow tackle this risk and this we did by implementing a research project called Viva PNG high train it was a long time not really <coughs> very hard to explain why we need a research project when we on the other hand simply can tender or buy a train well <coughs> but we need to tackle these risks and the Viva PNG high train um, was as you can see in 2017-18 it was submitted 2020 it was then 
really started has 5 millions of budget and 3 millions, 3.2 millions of funding. Project partners are Fen Systems, Tila Talban, Prose regarding the railroad competence, and uh, High Center taking care of technical H2 competence. Fen Systems is the consortium lead, also the systemic hydrogen competence, and the Tila Talban, obviously the project operator because they want to do the train and the rail operation competence in our project. What are the main objectives and consequently also the results? Well, with this project we want to establish the state of the art for hydrogen narrow gauge trains by means of train simulation, test bench operations and also hydrogen infrastructure. And the main thing is that we wanted to determine the criteria and parameters for the quality assurance and risk minimization process of hydrogen trains, corresponding infrastructure regarding tendering, contracting, commissioning, acceptance, operation and guarantee. I just can tell you, of course, there is someone where you can buy the hydrogen train, but there is also an interface with, and there is also someone where you can buy the hydrogen infrastructure, but there is a lot of interfaces and they are not well described yet. So the standards and norms are poor in this regard. And so all this, the refueling protocols, how they interact, all these things have to be <coughs> still researched. Another point you also have to uh, think about is uh, lifetime of the fuel cell system. Of course, as an operator, you want to increase it. You want more lifetime to get your operational costs down. You want to save hydrogen, so you also want to investigate how to optimize hydrogen demand, which is really on the operational energy cost side, brings you down. And you also want to assure quality, especially hydrogen quality. What if there is some problem with the hydrogen produced that poisons the fuel cell? Well, all these questions are not well answered. Well, they are well answered yet after um, and this research project already has progressed quite far. It will be, be finished or, or <coughs> ended next year. And of course, we also want to put these applications, findings and results into implementation of the Zilla Talban 2020 plus project bus. As we have already heard, this is still delayed. Trains, everything is there, just needs to be ordered. Um, but of course, uh, if there is a discussion going on, what is the cheapest train option, then the Zillertal or the hydrogen option is maybe uh, not even the right one. But if you consider or put it into a broader sense, broader perspective and a strategic perspective, then hydrogen is really interesting and hydrogen, a hydrogen train in Zillertal Valley is a even really important project for the reconstruction of the energy system towards electricity. So that really sounds strange or controversial, but it is not as you have seen now. So this brings me to the end of my presentation. Since the train has been delayed, we also focused on other problems, especially buses and trucks in the domain of green hydrogen and corresponding refueling. Um, we are at the moment at project or product development. So out of these test and prototype buses and trucks available here soon, uh, next year, project products will emerge that then really fit the demands of the European bus market, for example, a 12 meter bus that is really suited to all the standards and also trucks that can handle um, yeah, also alpine, alpine uh, usage. Important thing is also the infrastructure. So we have done a lot of work there. The refueler you can see here was also used for refueling uh, the um, Siemens D0 not long ago in Bavaria. And also uh, the green hydrogen from Emprise was used. So as you can see, this initiative of the Green Energy Center is <coughs> really working uh, hard to get um, the first steps done and um, step by step this is 
this is <coughs> moving forward, but sometimes not as fast as we hoped for, especially for example for the Tzila Taliban, but perhaps you only have to take another time frame, giving the next 10, 10 years maybe, or yeah, next years, uh, this problem will also find some solution, because it simply has to. If there are any questions, simply uh, there are my contact details uh, from the Green Energy Center. Now I only can say thanks for listening and if there are any questions, please, I'm pleased to answer them. If not possible now, you can also write me a mail. Thanks a lot and bye.